So Luis, I see you are looking well fed. Well fed. <laughs> what did you just and I can't eat? Say I'm fed up. No, no. <laughs> what did you just have? What was it, Dave? A banh mi sandwich, untraditional but delicious. The French and Vietnamese sandwich that came together. Um, I made it with fried spam, grilled pork, cucumbers, jalapenos, fresnos, pickled daikon radish, and carrots, and then an herb salad with scallion, Thai basil, cilantro, and mint. Boy, I tell you, yeah. you come to Trinidad, you'll be a millionaire. <laughs> yeah. it, it was delicious. The blending of the different spices and Oh, it's just great. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm short of words to express how delicious it was. <laughs> so tell me, where did you get your, 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 your training from, your, your background to be the chef now? Um, well, I worked at a family-run restaurant in high school, and I made money on the weekends. It was awesome. So right out of high school, I went to Florida Culinary Institute in West Palm. It's no longer there. Uh, but then after that, one of my culinary instructors at school um, taught me about fine dining restaurants and thinking outside the box and creative flavors and all that stuff. And I started doing research. I became obsessed with this restaurant in Chicago called Alinea. Mm. And for my graduation present, for me and myself and two other friends, we went up to Chicago and we ate there. And I never had food like that before. I never had an experience, a meal with 28 courses and aroma and smells and artistry and science all mixed together in one. And after I ate there, I was like, I have to work here. So I applied, I did a two day trial uh, where I flew up on my own dime, worked there, and then I got the job offer and I moved from Florida to there, mm. so. So do you try uh, to invent recipes of your own? Absolutely, I think like, um, as an American, I get a little bit of leniency because America's food culture is basically everybody's food culture all the beautiful countries that have come here and settled here whether it was by their own will or not honestly has created a melting pot where there are ingredients here and and global influences here that are like nowhere else um like this sandwich is the colonization of vietnam by france you know but tons of vietnamese have flocked here from getting away from their country to, to live here and they brought this with them so it's pretty exciting so I think I just learned how to combine flavors and things that I really like, and that's kind of how I cook. I don't really have a boundary. Like, my mom was French, but my dad's from New York, so there wasn't like a big cultural heritage growing up where like, these are the recipes of our culture and our, you know, our ancestry. I didn't have that really. So I just started tasting things and, oh, I like this spicy, I like this salty, I like this sour, I like this pickle, I like this. and just combining everything, you know? For example, Spam is definitely an American product, but it's similar to the products they use in Vietnam and things like that, in the sense of forced meats and, and charcuterie and sausages and things like that, so. Have yeah. you ever visited Vietnam? No, not oh, yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> but you, 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 you have it on your, um, your bucket list? I would like to see every country in the world if I could before I die. Uh, <laughs> They're all on my bucket list. Uh, what about Trinidad? Yeah. Good you view. haven't been there. No, not yet, no. We were going to go right before COVID okay. when they almost got locked in there. Yeah, yeah I, remember that. I remember that. You were on your way to Tobago. Oh, yes. You were hoping to get to Tobago. Hoping. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then things things really got tighter. Oh, Good man. thing because you would have been stuck in Trinidad. You would have been stuck in Trinidad for many months. Not so. that you would have been displaced, but I mean, you know, you would have been... Uh, yeah, I would have been angry. <laughs> I wanted to come back. Mm. So, excuse me. Did I? Did they, Did you tell me what hotel you work at right now, or restaurant? Uh, no, I work for a family who owns a synagogue. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. A synagogue. Yeah. So I run their whole culinary program. Okay, all right. Is it tedious working there, or you you could be um, very creative there? No, I have. You know, you have boundaries in any job. Um, you know, what does the clientele want? What are the food and dietary restrictions? Things like that. But as far as creativity goes, it's I get to basically make my own menus and do my own thing, so it's mm. pretty cool. But do you have a, an assistant? Uh, sometimes, but usually one man band for the majority of it. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. So, being um, <clears throat> the 4th of July, 
-hmm. Is there a, a, de um, a detraction from this hot dog and hamburger kind of a meal? I believe went with um I don't know, I don't know. Do is it is it strictly hot dogs and hamburgers? I remember we were in Pennsylvania one year for July fourth. And there are other grills, you know, yeah. grilled pork and hot beef. dog, hamburger, beef, and fireworks. That's yeah. pretty much usually the. Fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we had Japanese, French, yeah. <laughs> no Vietnamese, yeah. French, yeah, in, in Not America. Traditional. On July the fourth, yeah. and some Indian. Um, yeah. What so is the drink coming? Man mango lassi. So, mango lassi. Yeah, mango cardamom. Lassi was supposed to get fifty percent. You don't to ten. That's okay. You. <laughs> He's too busy recording. He doesn't get any of the juice. If you don't stop recording. <laughs> so, what did the drink has? In it? it has uh, mango, coconut jelly, coconut water, cardamom, um, yogurt, coconut cream. Wow, yeah. and you taught your mother-in-law to make this one because yeah. she made it. Well, it's mango season, so we had mangoes, might as well. <laughs> it's a good well, way to get rid of a lot of mangoes that. and have a good time without having to eat like 15 of them each. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, OP, you must be very happy to have a son-in-law that could... Uh, oh, yeah. That could do these things, huh? Yeah, I mean, coming from the islands, you know, I mean, we got a lot of nice food over there, but it was it was wonderful to experience up here. Yes, um, the different um, groups of people they have here, and, and like he could make a lot of them. So right, mm -hmm. yeah. but can, did D teach you how to make Indian food? Yeah, we've cooked together many times. Actually, that was I think, was that the first or the second time I ever met your parents? The first so, time. So what did you cook? We made roti together and, and aloo pies. pies we done together. Yeah. And um, what is it? The doll stuffed uh, doll puri. Yeah. Yeah. What? Yeah. And and you know he brought some friends, some chefs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they sat down right here, and they had a demonstration going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah. At one time, did you not have your YouTube channel showing you about cooking? Yeah, I was actually in this kitchen. <laughs> in this kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And whatever happened with the channel? Continue. Um, it's on hiatus. It's a lot of work. Um, and there was a lot of cost in the video editing because I don't know how to do it myself, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And um, then with work, it just kind of got like, okay, I'm working, and then on my free time, I'm working, and then I come home and I'm working. So I was like, okay, I need to pause on that for mm -hmm. a little bit. So your wife is happy with your cooking? Yeah, that's why I'm well, still married. <laughs> 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 If I didn't know how to cook, she probably would have given up on me with my craziness. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. They say the way to the heart is through the stomach. For yeah. sure, yeah. I, but in Trinidad, we say the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. It works both ways. It <laughs> both ways. <laughs> I see how <laughs> it's great. Anatomy, believe it or not, we're different, it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Yeah. I think I like that one better. <laughs> the way to a woman's heart is through her stomach. <laughs> I gotta, ah, Louis, you, you gotta write the cover it good. Huh? I said, I don't love to eat. Yeah. Oh, oh, she does, yeah. eh? Yeah. She knows good food. She loves different foods. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you marry the right man. <laughs> yeah, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but tell me something, Dave. When you all go out, you go out to a restaurant, I mean, at times, right? Yeah. Oh, do you find yourself being critical of meals that you might, you might partake of? Um, I mean, yes. it's of yes course. and no, yes and no. Here's the thing. <laughs> if I'm spending $10, my expectations, I want something that's tasty and enjoyable for $10. If I'm going out to a dinner, I'm spending $50 a person and, and I'm expecting a little more. I don't just want it because it's on Palm Beach Island or, you know, because fish is expensive for it to be 50 bucks and then I could cook it better for... Uh, not even a lot of time expended, you know, to make the dish on the plate. Mm -hmm. I could make it better. That's when I get disappointed. But mm -hmm. that's why I really like spending a lot of money on food because now I'm trying to not only have a dinner, but I want it to be a special occasion. People will go out, get dressed, and go to the opera or go see a play or go to a museum. And at a restaurant, you can see the chef's artistry and their vision of the world through their food if, you know, they have a tasting menu or something. I had 10 or 15 or 20 courses and I got to see not only where this person grew up but 
how they think about food and the way they they like art and how they interpret art through cooking and things like that that's where i get excited because i think the best i mean food can be delicious and it can be simple you know a sandwich and be really really good but then you can have something that's elevated and that surprises you uh, maybe it's a flavor combination you weren't expecting maybe it was an aroma that really tied the whole dish together and you know uh, like the ratatouille moment. Have you seen the movie Ratatouille, the Pixar mm -hmm, movie? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, he eats the ratatouille, and all of a sudden, he's brought back to his childhood, and his mom making him a humble dish of vegetables that just taste good on the inside. You know, <laughs> you know. So that's that's where I like to mm -hmm. to go. So, what would be your favorite restaurant in Italia and in India? Um, I can't say one particularly because there I mean there's a ton of chefs that I follow that are of all different backgrounds and origins um, and honestly if I could go for a meal and be treated like a king and my wife could be treated like a queen and we could have a great night out and we could spend a couple hours just talking and enjoying and uh, feeling pampered versus not getting a massage but feeling pampered like in being served to mm -hmm. and then have something that I'm gonna taste and remember for like the rest of my life that to me is worth the money, you know? Mm. If I see a play, it usually doesn't move me as much because of what I'm a big fan of, which Your is passion. cooking and eating, yeah. Um, it's not gonna remember, but like, when I was in San Francisco and there was that beet cooked pasta with caviar and a sturgeon cream, I'll never forget that dish, mm. you know? Or the first time I went to Alinea and I tasted the black truffle explosion, which was a liquid filled ravioli with black truffles in it and butter and romaine and parmesan and when you pop it in your mouth all of a sudden your face feels encapsulated oh my gosh. in the aroma <laughs> of truffle like those are things That's that I'll never forget it. yeah. 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 So it was and, really good. But, but there's those things that like they are next level a lot of the times you know these fine dining chefs feel uh, or people who are not familiar with it they feel like these fine dining chefs are just doing things for gimmick reasons for gimmicky purposes and at the same time it's like okay maybe the chef is trying to be in the place of the diner and transport to them to the place where they first had this ingredient or the, the the feeling that they had when they sourced the ingredient or something like that or the first time they tasted a dish and that's one of those things that you know I think is really especially when you could eat something that looks and feels and like it seems relatable and then you put it in your mouth and you have no idea. Okay, it looks like an over easy egg, but it's coconut and mango. And it's a dessert. And you're like, I thought this was a fried egg. I thought this was an over easy egg. And your mind's just blown because you're expecting something and you get something completely <clears throat> different. You're expecting savory and egg and rich. And then you get coconut and mango and floral and, and acid. And then you're like, oh man, this is crazy. You know? You'd be disappointed. It's, it's actually exciting. Oh, exciting. Yeah. I mean, if you were eating something and expecting one thing, got something completely different, but was absolutely delicious, that's a surprise. That's something that's going to make you feel childlike emotion. And, and you know, it's like, a, it's like a gift, a surprise party or something like that. It was okay, like, okay, all okay. of a sudden, now your gotcha. adrenaline's rushing. You're, you're like, <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> you know? So. One of the problems I have when we go out to eat, right? Mm -hmm. I have a problem deciding what I should drink mm -hmm. with a certain meal that we are having. How, what would you recommend that, you know, a person, is, uh, a person dine in, what would you recommend uh, as, as a drink per meal? For instance, if I'm having an Indian meal, I think one of the best things would be water, right? Yeah. Because of the acute spiciness. If you're having pasta, for instance, what would you what would you order to drink? For me personally, mm -hmm. water. Water. Because, I, like, here's the thing. Um, unless the chef and the sommelier are working specifically to like bring these two, the drink and the plate together. First off, you have to believe that a the chef's cooking is good and delicious, and b you need to trust that the sommelier is going to pair something that is gonna, in your mind, in your palate, be cohesive. There's times we've been out to eat and you know, oh, we're splurging, we're gonna have a great meal, we're gonna have all these courses, let's get the wine pairing. And then the wine pairing's like, oh, okay, I'd rather just drink water and not, you know, mix the two, Yeah. in my opinion. Mm. 
some people might like it some people might not but there's one of those things where you know you might be um, a big fan of white wine for example but they serve you a red wine with that course so even though it might be a good pairing for the majority of people who like red wine you might not be particularly for it um, and then there's other places that do like non-alcoholic pairings for dishes where they are specifically trying to enhance what's on the plate with a drink and that I lean more towards than alcohol because you know yes both can be great but it's not like somebody made this bottle of wine specifically for this dish they're pairing yeah. something that's already existing where it might have the aromas or things acidity levels that might match with it but it's not meant to be together mm. you know what do you how do you feel about desserts now um honestly i'm a chocoholic so anything that has chocolate is awesome but um there's a couple of chefs and a couple of places that i've eaten at across the years one in particular was Blackbird in Chicago. It was a Michelin star restaurant. The chef at the time was Chef Patrick Fay, and he utilized a lot of savory ingredients in desserts. So corn, or fennel, or beets, and he made desserts using things that people associate with vegetables, or salads, or side dishes and stuff. And that being calibrated to a sweetness level that was delicious and interesting and unique, was really what kind of enticed me. Mm -hmm. um, different. Yeah, I mean, I love desserts, and there's like the thing that I I find about um, pastries and desserts and things like that versus like savory ingredients and and savory dishes is that a pastry chef can have a lot more flexibility and texture expectations. If you get a Jello for dessert, people had Jello for dessert. But if you get a Jello for an appetizer, you're kind of like, whoa, whoa what's, what, going, what's on? going, right? You know, <laughs> or if or if you got a pudding for dessert or a pudding for an appetizer, an entree, you're like, wait, whether it's a savory pudding or a sweet pudding, you know, that it could be off pudding, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. So I think at least texturally, it could be more appealing. In desserts, you have a lot more realm where, okay. I don't want everything to be sweet, 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 because then you get that like coyly overbearing dessert that yeah. nobody really enjoys. But I can have, uh, for example, chocolate's a great one. I, this is why I think it's like really awesome. It can be sweet, it could be milky, it could be creamy, it could be bitter, it could even be spicy, it could be savory, you could add salt to it, you could add chilies to it. There's a lot of realms that you can go with chocolate and it still stays in balance and in harmony. You know, so that's, um, as far as pastry work, I think that's what's the most exciting thing. Um, what was the sugar you used in this again? Palm sugar. Palm sugar. Yeah. What is palm sugar? Well, it's from... That's in the pork. Yeah, in the pork. In the pork. It's yeah. a sugar, but... But they use it in Thailand, and it's got a little bit different flavor, and it's oh. naturally derived. You mean from the palm tree you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. A sugar from the palm. Is it a liquid? No, it's like a little hockey puck brick of sugar. Okay. You chop it up and then oh. marinate. So you use the in this. Yep. Mm -hmm. The different. You taste the sweetness. That's the different things that in the sandwich yeah. that you get. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The taste the sweetness a lot in this. It's sweet like sugar, but it has a different taste. Yeah, savory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, savory. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay, just to end this now, <laughs> I always have a problem when I go to a restaurant knowing how to tip. Even if there, even if there's um, a service charge, I always feel, you know, it's important to really give something personal. Mm -hmm. What do you think about tipping? Um, well, oh, don't you ask your service charge? Huh? You, yeah, I mean, I think that's everybody's got a different person thing on that. I, I mean, I worked as a server for a while. I'll be honest, I was a terrible server. <laughs> I was very ADHD and with all the positive intentions of, as I was walking by, hey, can I get another soda? Absolutely, when I want, walked in the back, I forgot completely what they asked me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was always like, if I got 20% as a tip, I was like, okay, at least I did a decent job. Like that was my entry level, like I did good. Anything above that was like, okay, that was really nice, at least the way I, I looked at it. But in some of my travel and experience, like there's countries where there is no tipping, you know? And the fact that 
there's there's like a plus and a minus. Some people are hustlers and want to work and and can really you know great give great service and get great tips all the time and walk out with more money than a salary or salary. hourly person, right? Yeah. And so that's advantageous for those hustlers. Then there's some people that aren't as much of a hustler or aren't really willing to give the service or or that time to somebody, and they would love to be on a salary because they never make you know oh well. They were unattentive, they weren't nice, they weren't this, they weren't that, that my water was empty many times and I asked and I still had to wait. You know, there's a lot of these things that people expect as a minimum of service. But then when you don't have a tip, then it's like, you know, the place I went to, the, there's a button on the table. If you need something, oh, can I can I get another Coke? Someone walk right over, bam, Coke. Oh, and they just bring it over because they didn't have to mm. serve you in that way. So, so it's just like tip, it was built in. With a tip, you get much better service. I mean, well, that once again depends on the person that's serving you's personality. If somebody knows that, hey, at least, uh, you know, I have a job, I'm getting paid a decent living wage, and I get to go home every night and know that I'm going to be okay versus somebody who in that mindset might say, I come to work, I work hard, and tonight I walked out in nothing or almost nothing. I could barely live off of this. It was a bad night, you know? Then they go home and they're depressed and the next day they have to come back and still be happy, you know? So it depends on the, the person, you know, individually. But Some, Sometimes too, Nancy, it's, um, you know, I don't think they get um, paid as, you know, as well as they should. And they depend on that tip. Mm -hmm. So this is my feeling because I had a son-in-law doing it before. And I know he depended on that. So I try to give them a, a tip because I know it's going towards those guys too. So as he was saying, they wouldn't be depressed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's also... So you kind of helping out in a way. I feel like some people who've never worked in the industry or never done that job, they don't understand the multitasking and the, is, the, yeah. the, the co-workers that might be not doing their job, which is slowing them down, which is inadvertently getting turned on to the customer. So... I try to give the benefit of the doubt, like unless they're like nasty, rude, or you know, completely disregard you. Like I try to always lean in favor of giving them more, you know. But once again, it depends on how you grew up and and what you were taught. You know, some people think fifteen is okay, but they've never worked in the industry, and then they wonder why they're, you know, their server is like, oh, I don't want that person again when they come in the next time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I worked my butt off, and then you know, I, I didn't get anything. You know, in return for it. So, so twenty percent is is reasonable. I think, I think that's like a standard. Yeah, if they do exceptional service, like I went to a fine dining restaurant, I felt like I got waited on hand and foot. The service charge was already in there, and um, I think the bill. I know it's gonna sound crazy. I think the bill was already like nine hundred and twenty-five bucks. I gave them the straight thousand I planned on spending for that night anyway, just because I felt like a king. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like you made me feel great. I want to make you feel great. Kind of thing. So does the chef get does the chef in the background there? He gets anything out of that? So no, and that's part of the thing that I think is kind of, you know, a little screwy in the restaurant business. Like there's a restaurant that I go to in Boynton Beach, on their dessert menu is a tip for the kitchen. And you could add that to your okay. instead of ordering a dessert or in addition to ordering a dessert, you could add a tip for the kitchen staff because they're working, they're on an hourly salary. Yeah. If they do three hundred people that night or a thousand people that night, they're still getting paid their hourly wage. So it could be a super rough, hectic, crazy night, or a smooth sailing, fifty-person night, same money. and they're making the same money. So that you know, that's why it's like, okay, is it fair? Is it not fair? Um, but once again, it's a choice and it's a decision to have a job, and whether you like it or not. I mean, some people, if they don't like the money they're getting paid, then they should look elsewhere. If they are passionate about what they do, then that should drive them through, whether it's you know worthy or not of their expectations. Job satisfaction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Dave. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoy that. So let's say, Monsieur Dave. And um, these are for us again, Luis. <laughs> <laughs>